Hi guys, Tony Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the Kef LS50 wireless which you can see in the background. Now I've been using these speakers for around three weeks as my daily drivers and the reason I say around three weeks is because I have a loan from Kef to actually review them. And no, before you ask, I'm not biased, I'm not paid and I'm a completely independent reviewer. Now these speakers can be found for around £2,000 in the UK, whilst in the US they can be found for $2,500. Links will be down in the description below in case you're interested, including a link to Kef's website where you can find out some more information about the speakers. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So first off, let's talk about the build quality and design and also in terms of the inputs. Now at the front, you've got the Kef UniQ design, at least that, I think that's how you say it. You've got a 25 millimeter aluminum dome and a 130 millimeter uh, magnesium and aluminum uh, alloy um, compound uh, for, the, for the actual driver unit. Now there's an infrared sensor at the front for the, um, for the remote control, which I'll get into in just a bit. And at the top, you've got touch sensitive buttons, which I'll show you as well once I've uh, plugged this in back to my PC setup. Now the speaker is available in three different um, color combinations. You can see the one I've got in front of me is pretty obviously white. Um, it's quite interesting to note that there's like a different design, kind of like a, a glossy type of material on over here, whilst uh, here you've got kind of like a kind of a matte finish at the front. I'm not too much of a fan of the white color scheme personally, but anyway, you, know, you might quite like it. At the back, you've got um, the uh, ports, the vent ports at the, well, as you can imagine for uh, for the driver, and you also got a heat sink as well. Now the heat sink does got doesn't say relatively warm, but for example, right now I've been running it for about three to four hours, um, and it's been plugged in, and um, it's relatively warm. Now at the back, you've got a variety of different. Um, uh, inputs and settings. So first of all, you've got your AC input over here for your power. You've got a subwoofer output, which is great to see. You've got a PC via USB Type-B connection, uh, which is how I've primarily been using um, these speakers as a bookshelf speaker. Uh, you've got optical as well, RCA, um, RCA as well, uh, a network input, uh, there's a service USB, and then over here you've got the speaker I, uh, EQ, which you'll want to adjust, but I very much um, urge you to go um, through the app um, and configure the speaker through the app because you'll have a wide array of uh, customization through there. Um, I will show you that as well. And then over here you've got a kind of a RJ45 um, uh, output um, to the left driver. Now elsewhere in terms of connectivity, you've also got wireless capability. Obviously this is the KEF LS50 wireless, so what is wireless about it? Well, you've got dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi connection, and you've got Bluetooth 4.0 with APTX codec as well, which is great if you just want to stream via your mobile or make it easy for people to, to quickly play their music um, to the speaker. However, I would urge you to stick on Wi-Fi and or a wired connection instead. Moving on from that, uh, let's talk about the remote. Now, the remote itself, as you can see, is um, colored in the same respect as the, the speaker speaker itself, it's great to see. I'm not sure if it's always white, but nevertheless, this one's white. What I don't like about this, uh, the, um, the remote is that it feels very plasticky and cheap. For a set of £2,000 speakers, I would expect a more premium type of a build. Like, let's, if I just go quiet, that plasticky type of button feel isn't something I would have expected from a £2,000 KEF product. But nevertheless, this is what KEF provides, and I'm not the only one to have mentioned about the, um, about the remote. Um, but on the plus side, it does allow you all the sort of controls that you want, media controls, um, and also uh, input, which will come in very handy in just a bit. So now I've got it plugged into the PC, you can see the illuminated touch controls. There's a little chime when you turn it on and off, and the same sort of chime or different type of chime comes on when you turn it on and there's also that clicking sound on the uh, left uh, driver um, as well to indicate it's switched on. Now at the top as you can see there is a variety of different controls such as changing inputs and when you go into Bluetooth mode you get the Bluetooth pairing button which appears. Now the controls are very responsive, I have no problems whatsoever with the controls. However what I did find annoying is the fact that there's no indicator of the input that I'm selected at the front of the speaker. So imagine if you are sitting in front of your speakers, be it in front of your PC or your TV, you won't know the input. Now, of course, you will hear the different input, but I would have expected some sort of visual indicator showing me that. On top of that, the touch control uh, buttons 
are a little bit finicky when it comes to the volume control. So of course you can use the remote control, but what I found myself having to do is to tap constantly on this um, on the volume keys. Now the volume keys can be adjusted in terms of sensitivity, in terms of the levels that they increase when you go up or down, but I just found it a little bit annoying. I just would have preferred an old school kind of knob where I just um, turn up the volume and I can actually see the dial going up or down. So now let's talk about the app. Now there's two apps to download, the Kef Control app and the Kef Stream app. The one I'm interested in right now is the Kef Control app. Now you can see right now even though we've got a wireless product which is connected to my PC via a, a USB connection, you can see that the Kef LS50 wireless is offline. The reason behind that is because it's on the PC mode. Now this means that each time you switch on or off the speaker you have to go into wireless mode. Now as you can imagine I have got no visual indicator so I have to kind of change inputs and kind of guess if it is selected to the right input or not. But you can refresh and you can see right now it's gone on Wi-Fi. Once you connect up to Wi-Fi the connection works pretty seamlessly. What I found quite interesting over here is that if I were to then change inputs, I could then control my media via the inputs I've then selected. But the initial step of you having to connect to the Wi-Fi connection via the uh, Wi-Fi input is necessary in order for you to control the speakers wirelessly. Which to me somewhat defeats the point because they're a wireless product. I don't really want to be stepping up there and um, touching with different inputs or using the remote when I just want to be doing it all via the smartphone. Anyway, the Kef Control app is, um, once you do get it set up, is absolutely important in order to get the best sound quality from the speakers. And the reason why is because you can create different uh, uh, sound profiles. And these sound profiles essentially determine how the actual speaker sounds. You've got the basic setup which is pretty comprehensive and, and pretty detailed at the same time in terms of de um, giving you a detail of how the speaker is um, physically set up on your uh, system. So you can see these are my settings, but then if you go into the expert settings, you'll get a little bit more detail um, from what's um, going on here, including, for example, the um, sub out low pass frequency. So these are just quite interesting things to do, but absolutely important in order for you to get the best sound quality from your speakers. I can't stress it enough because without doing this setup, you'll have a very weird sounding or poor sounding LS50 wireless. Now let's move on to the Kef Stream app. Now again, what you're going to have to do is make sure it's on the Wi-Fi mode in terms of inputs and then the speaker will appear and then you can control it. If you were to press this button, it will take you to the Kef Control app, which we were um, just using. So uh, make sure you are aware of that, that you need both of these apps installed. Now within this app, there's a lot of functionalities you can have. For example, you can navigate the media which is currently on your phone or your tablet or whatever device you have. And also you can create a um, access your media servers, which is great for if you've got NAS drives uh, that have um, music on them. And then you can connect up your Spotify and Tidal accounts as well on them. So the uh, remote control app works pretty simultaneously. However, I do find there's a bit of a lag between pressing play and it actually appearing or when you change songs. At least this is what I found is when I was uh, selecting music um, that was present on my phone um, that was going via Wi-Fi to my network and therefore to the speakers, it just took a little bit of a delay. So now before I go into sound demo, I just want to uh, explain in terms of my setup. So first of all, the speakers are connected over USB type B to my my PC. In terms of sampling and uh, resolution, I've got 192 kilohertz selected at 24 bit. If you use these over optical, you'll be limited to 9624. Worth bearing in mind in terms of your setup. Now you might be wondering how on earth is this happening? Well, as I've mentioned before, it's got built-in DAC and amplifier. Therefore, you don't have to worry about connecting them up separately. I did, just for the uh, argument's sake, connect them over RCA to my Cord Hugo 2 DAC, which you might be able to see just over here. Here. And what I found is that the sound quality just didn't sound as crisp and as clear as it did over the USB connector. I'm not sure if that's to do with my setup or not, but regardless, I just found it quite nice that the convenient setup, which was via USB, just worked perfectly out the box. Now, I should also mention that I have got a subwoofer connected. However, for the sake of this demo, I have turned off my subwoofer and through the Kef Control app have disabled the subwoofer output. 
Now what I will do in this video, um, well at least in the following video, or which you might see is uh, Priya, my friend over there, on the secondary video um, what I'll do is show you me turning on and off the subwoofer output without the subwoofer on, hopefully that makes sense, and then you'll be able to hear a sort of frequency change with the um, with the speakers. Now bear in mind everything you're hearing is coming from the speaker and it's being compressed by YouTube. It's not ideal, you want to hear it in person, but I must give you a sound demo because, well, we're, we're talking about an audio product over here. So without further ado, let's go into the demo. Right, so now we're going to move on to the second song called Ghosting, and over here, this, this song has a lot of sub-bass response. Now what I will do is basically indicate when I am turning on the subwoofer um, input. In other words, it says, is your subwoofer plugged in? And I press yes, you should hear a sort of slight drop in terms of the frequency. If you don't, I'm sorry, but that's my camera slash YouTube. So let's get into it. Turning on. Turning off. So in terms of the Teufel subwoofer in question, I'm going to turn it on whilst um, you're going to be listening to music and I have the setting enabled, in other words, is your subwoofer plugged in, I've gone yes, and then you're going to hear a difference of what this subwoofer does to the overall sound. So there you have it, some sound demos as well, and some that you can actually listen to yourself. Make sure you check out uh, Priya in the description below, click to her music, and uh, let me know what you think. Now, the reason I put those different demos and different setups is because I wanted to showcase what you can and can't play or what the capable capabilities of the speakers are and also in terms of limitations. They do cut off at 40 hertz. I mean ultimately they are bookshelf speakers. They don't come with a built-in subwoofer or an external subwoofer should I say. So therefore if you want that extra low end um, rumble, do get yourself an external subwoofer and connect it up. And I like the fact that Kev have included that subwoofer output. It might seem very trivial, but it's very useful to have it because people can create a home cinema setup with that. Because personally what I found is that when I was watching movies or listening to music that has a lot of bass, these just didn't give me that low end rumble that I really liked. Whilst with me, my, my, uh, oh, me Teufel uh, subwoofer as like a little pirate I would say, um, it did provide that low end rumble which I actually quite liked. So now let's talk about the sound quality. What do I personally think of the sound quality? First of all, the sub bass. Well, as it might be pretty obvious, these extend down to 40 hertz, which is decent for a set of bookshelf speakers. It gives you enough sort of sub bass response, but not enough to make you enjoy all your music or your movies. As I said before, get yourself a subwoofer and you will greatly enhance that experience, but unfortunately that will set yourself back a little bit more money than £2,000 because you're going to have to buy yourself an external subwoofer. 
Moving on from that, we've got the mid bass. I was extremely impressed by the mid bass response. It's clean, it's tight, it's precise, it's exactly how I would like my mid bass to sound. It's not overwhelming and of course you can adjust the settings or EQ it separately if you so wish, but what I really liked about the mid bass out of the box or through after that little setup that I told you that you have to do via the Kef Control app, then you do get a really nice lush mid bass. And it's not something I often would say about a set of bookshelf speakers, but the Kef LS50 wireless do deliver a fantastic mid-range response. Now in terms of the mids, I do feel that these speakers are slightly V-shaped, they're slightly warm sounding, which isn't necessarily bad, it actually is perfect for me in terms of my music taste, um, however, I do find that a little bit V-shaped, which means that if you are an audiophile and you have a massive hi-fi setup or something like that, you'll feel that these sli sound slightly veiled. Now, the extent of that veiledness or how it sounds is pretty much identical to the LS50. Now, I can only say that I've demoed the LS50, I don't own the LS50 or own the LS50 wireless or have had them at home, but what I can say is the mid-range is very similar. If anything, they're almost identical. So the mid-range is slightly pushed back, slightly recessed, but it's to be expected at this sort of price range. And I know it sounds pretty crazy for £2,000 speakers to sound slightly recessed, but that's what I found. In terms of the upper mids, however, they do extend very well. They're very much forward sounding. And in terms of vocals, they do come out very well. Uh, they sound controlled and they sound um, that they don't feel subdued in some respect. Whereas other speakers would kind of muddle up that sound and bring the mids and the highs and the lows all together and kind of give you a sort of a weird type of sound. It's not the case with the Kef LS50 wireless. I was actually very impressed with that. Moving on to the highs, they extend very well. Now some people said these could be sensitive to some people's ears. I found that these speakers weren't too overly sensitive or sibilant to my ears. I, I was very much enjoying the way that they extended at the high, uh, the high end and then the way they produced a very nice sparkle at the top end, meaning that my music sounded lively and exciting. Same goes for gaming, same went for movies. Now the sound stage. And this point is where I kind of lost it with the LS50s, or the LS50 wireless. Now, there's a lot of talk about these speakers being fantastic in terms of instrument separation, width and depth of soundstage, and in some, in some respects, I would agree. They've got incredible instrument separation. You hear um, your different instruments coming from left and right. You've got great positional cues if you're gaming. You can kind of get a sense of direction if you're watching movies. However, the, the soundstage width and depth, to me, sounded a bit too closed. Now, the reason I say that is that, for example, I'm comparing it to an active um, speaker, the Edifier S3000 Pro. Now, those speakers are nowhere near in terms of all the capabilities of the LS50 wireless in terms of overall sound quality, but when it comes to the soundstage, I felt those ones delivered a very interesting omnidirectional sound. In other words, you kind of get surrounded by sound even though it's a 2.0 setup. With the LS50 wireless, however, it was very a unidirectional sound. In other words, you had to be pointed towards the speakers to get the best sound. As soon as I deviated left or right, I would lose that very kind of involved sound stage. And if I was anywhere in the room, and that's not to do with the volume of the speakers, because these things get incredibly loud to the point where your whole house will be full of sound, I found that when I was positioned elsewhere in the room, I just didn't feel as involved with the speakers, or with my music, should I say. Whilst with the Edifier speakers instead, I felt a little bit more involved, just because of that extra soundstage and width and depth that I got. In case you're interested about those speakers, by the way, I'll link them down in the description below. They're about five to six hundred pounds, so a lot cheaper. So that was my biggest complaint about the LS50 wireless, the soundstage, the width and depth that you got. Don't get me wrong, they're decent, they do a, a decent job, but for a £2,000 speaker system, I expected more. I expected a lot more, in fact. I expected to be kind of blown away by that element of being in a bubble of music or sound. So this leads me on to my conclusion. Ultimately, the LS50 wireless is the wireless upgrade over the LS50. In other words, it provides wireless functionality, has a built-in DAC and amplifier, which means it's much more convenient to use. You don't have to have complicated setups, and you get pretty good sound. 
In fact, the sound is incredible. It's among the best sounding uh, bookshelf speakers I've ever heard to date. However, the soundstage to me let it down. I just wanted more width and depth to be heard. So in some respects, I would recommend it for those people who want an easy audiophile bookshelf solution. Whilst on the other hand, I would say there is some things that could be improved. Maybe increasing the, uh, the driver size or creating a, a separate tweeter and therefore um, allowing the, the drivers to, to, to kind of speak to me a bit more would have potentially been great. And even in terms of the actual design of the speakers, notably those touch uh, controls, the lack of a volume knob and a very cheap um, a feeling um, a remote control do kind of let it down. So that's my honest opinion um, of the speakers. As I said before, I'm not paid, I'm not sponsored, I'm not biased. I have to send these speakers back after I've done this review essentially. And essentially, I would like to thank Kef for sending them out and trusting me that I'll be producing an honest video. So there we go. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the speakers, what you think of the review if you want. Uh, flame me if you want because most audiophiles always do even though I've heard about three to 500 different audio related products. But you know, every, each to their own. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you're interested in buying them, do check down the links in the description below. Uh, there'll be buy links and including specs. And um, as I said before, if you do want to check out my friend Pri in terms of her music, do check them out. Uh, do check out those songs below as well. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye bye.